when did time start? Time, one of the most mysterious things of the universe, is the topic of this video. There will be other videos about time. But for now, let's focus on this question. When did time start? This question is a paradox. It contains a contradiction in terms. And yet, at the same time, speaking of which, it's also correct. Let's see why. First of all, let's see why the, the, the question has a contradiction. When did time start? We're not asking when something happened in time. We're asking when time happened, started. Actually, I forgot to take off my headsets. It's different because if this is a timeline, let's say from past to future, this can be anything, minutes, seconds, hours, years, centuries. This is the direction. Zero. This is where time starts. Let's say this is now. And this is the future. We're not there yet. So if we ask when something happened in time, like when did I start recording this video? A minute and 59 seconds ago. Whatever we ask, whatever phenomenon we ask, when did it start? It started at some moment in this time window, from the beginning of time, zero, to now. But in this video, we are investigating, speculating, and we, and we will make hypotheses about when did time itself start. Where is the contradiction? The contradiction is that we cannot say when did time start. If you say when did I start recording this video, when means that there is a time going on and in, in, in some moment this time I started recording this video. But if we say when did time start, it would imply that there was another time and when, in what moment in that time, time start, but it's a contradiction because we are talking about time. So if time started here, there wasn't another time before because if there was, we were talking about, we would have been talking about that time too. We want to know when the entire time started. So it's not that there was a, a before here, when time started. No, there was no before. There was no time before time started. And because of this, we cannot even say before. There was no before. Before time. <laughs> so see, can you see the contradiction? There was no before, before time. Saying before time doesn't make any sense. So, whatever caused time, the origin of time, however weird it is, this mysterious thing, it's timeless. It doesn't have any time. Sometimes, we can almost subconsciously get used to, the, to, a, to a misleading idea about time. Like taking time per granted, as if time always existed, and only things happened in time. It can be a very short thing, like a, a, a very something that lasted a few seconds, or like a blink of an eye, or something longer like the life of a person, or the life of a city, from the moment it, it, was, it was built to the moment it may be 
it was destroyed by a cataclysm or, 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 or a cosmic event which lasts longer, the life of a star, or even of the entire universe. But time was something else. It was simply going on since, like, always, as, as if it was always existing. Now, scientifically speaking, it's a very long topic. I don't even have enough education to fully understand it and to be able to explain it. And I don't want to go off topic and make this video too long because there are plenty of videos and articles and websites and blogs talking about things that we already know. The goal of this channel, Beyond the Universe, is to speculate, is to theorize, to make hypotheses, to stimulate other people, people that have better knowledge, to stimulate scientists, to stimulate possible geniuses like Einstein's, Einstein, sorry, out there, so that maybe they can be inspired and that idea, that, that advancement would spark in their mind. As I said in the video before, the purpose is to throw apples. The apple that fell on Newton's head inspired him to figure out the classical uh, model of gravity. The apple itself wasn't, wasn't special, but gave him that inspiration because he was special. He was a great scientist. So that's the goal of this video. So I want to talk about the things that we don't know yet and try to propose some hypotheses. So I don't want to go off topic. Suffice it to say that scientists with the Big Bang model and, and, and relativity, etc., they have a lot of, of reasons to believe that time started, that time had a beginning, that time wasn't, didn't exist, like, uh, did not always exist, sorry. So you can Google it, you can search more, uh, scientifically speaking, uh, reasons to motivate that. Most likely uh, it's like that. Uh, th that's the, the most uh, likely conclusion accepted. But there is also another reason that I just want to quickly mention, because everybody can easily understand it because it doesn't require a degree in physics. It's just logic. It's a logical, reasonable, uh, reason for this. If we ask, let's take a city. This is a city. For how long did this city exist? If it was built 10 years ago, this city existed for 10 years. If it was built a hundred years ago, this city existed for a hundred years, and so on. So we can also say that if this city existed for a hundred years, we can say that a hundred years passed since the city existed. Or we can say that a hundred years finished past, finished, whatever, past, finished, existed for, etc. Now, if we say that this city existed for a billion years, it's an old city, it means what? That a billion years past, uh, there is no room, <laughs> since the start, the, the city was started. Now let's go back to the analogy with time. If we say that this city always existed, what does it mean? How many years passed? How many years did it feel on its skin, on its, on its let's say, uh, yeah, on its skin, on, on its eyes, on, on how many years did it age? 
a hundred, no, always existed. 200, a billion. If this city always existed, how many years passed? Infinite. If it always existed, it means that an infinite amount of time is on its shoulder. Poor, poor thing. Must feel pretty tired. This is the contradiction in terms. Again, another contradiction. Why? The city existed for 100 years. We can say that 100 years passed or finished. If the city existed for 1,000 years, we can say that 1,000 years passed or finished. If the city always existed, we can say that an infinite amount, number of years or centuries or whatever, we can use any unit of measurement, it doesn't make any difference at this point, passed or an infinite number of years finished. Can you see the contradiction? Infinite, finished. Infinite can never finish. It's infinite. It's a contrary. It is the contrary. Infinite can never pass. It doesn't matter how long, how much time will pass. An infinite amount of, pa of time did not pass yet and never will. We can count years from now. Let's pretend we were immortal. 10 years, 100 years, 1000 years. A million years, a billion years, there isn't such a number that if you get to that number, then mathematically the next unit is infinite. It's not like that you get 900, 990, 995, 999, and then infinite. Or 999 billion, 999 million, 999,999, and then after that we run out of number. There are no other numbers, so the next one is infinite. No, numbers never finish. So, as numbers can never finish, time can never finish. Uh, an infinite amount of time can never finish. The numbers of seconds, of years, of millennia, of whatever, will always keep growing because numbers can always grow. So an infinite amount of time can never be finished. So time cannot always have existed in the past. So if this is now, if this is the present, an infinite time can never pass in the future because we will never be able to say, okay, now, from now, 2018, let's start counting. Okay, 2019, okay, one year passed. 2020, okay, two years passed, 3,000, okay, a thousand years passed, okay, a billion years passed, okay, now an infinite number of years finished. No, infinite, they can never finish. So, as in the future, we will never, nobody will ever be able to say, okay, now an infinite amount of time passed since that day Nick recorded the video in 2018. Same in the past. We cannot say that time always existed because that would imply that an infinite amount of time has already passed it couldn't even pass in another three trillion years imagine if it was a possible for it to, to, to have already passed finished infinite is infinite cannot be finished cannot be finite is infinite so clarify that both scientists and logic agree that time started. Let's go to the core of the mystery. When did time start? The initial and founding question. Oh, sorry, my my board is falling apart because time is passing, so it's aging. Imagine if in an infinite number of years passed, we wouldn't even have dust. Okay, so when did time start? Sorry. 
as I said, it might seem a contradiction because there wasn't time before time, there wasn't even a before. So how is this possible? Let's see something about the nature of time that is amazing. Amazing, sorry. There is a beautiful video, very interesting, on YouTube. You don't have to watch the video to understand this video. I will make a very quick summary. But if you want to deepen, to expand your knowledge about that, you can watch the video. It's much nicer. And there are beautiful animation, computer graphics. The title of the video is called The Illusion of Time, Full Documentary. You can find it on, find it on YouTube. I will put the link of the video in, in the description of my video, this video. And if you start to approximately minute 18, uh, minute 18 and something, 30, 40 seconds, up to the minute 26, there is a piece in this documentary in which Brian Greene explains the topic. It's fantastic. So this is something we already know. It's proven science. It's, we know it for a fact. Started with Einstein, then it was observed measured, verified experimentally countless times and it's amazing. It's something I didn't I, I didn't know, I didn't expect. I knew about time dilation but I didn't know about these subtle aspects of time dilation. So to simplify, as I said, it's necessary that we know this future of time, this characteristic about the nature of time before we tackle the mystery of when time started. To simplify, because I'm not good at all in drawing, I'm not going to draw a three-dimensional bread loaf, which is a, an allegory that Brian Greene used, scientist, in that video to represent the timeline of the universe. So I will make it, it bi-dimensional, as if we are looking at it from top. So time, space. So scientist Brian Greene considered here the origin of time and the beginning of the universe, the Big Bang, or whatever, if it wasn't a Big Bang. So here, let's say it's time zero. To facilitate the understanding, because we cannot draw a multi-dimensional thing on a bidimensional board, I will use different colors to represent different dimensions. So red is time. Past, future. Let's say now we are here. This is now. 2018. And this is the origin of the universe when time was zero and time started. So, of course, the universe, we know the universe is expanding. So Brian Greene represented it in this way, like an expanding body. We are, we are looking at it from top, but in the actual video, it was like, a, like a, a bread loaf. So this is the early expansion of the universe, which was incredibly fast. And then it kind of stabilized. And this is our bread loaf. So this is the future, so let's forget about it. There will be other videos about the future. Um, this is now, this is present. Here is Earth. This is the universe. Well, of course, there's other, there's more universe even here because we don't have enough space on the board. Earth. And here we are, us. Now, Brian Greene says, let's pretend here, very far away from us, there is an alien in another galaxy on his planet, in his star system. Let's try to draw a nice alien. Okay, kind of. This alien is riding a bicycle. 
I know it doesn't sound doesn't sound sorry really alien. Usually we used to think about aliens like very advanced starship, but that's what Brian Green used, and that's good for me. And there's a reason why he used the bicycle because he needed a slow vehicle for this purpose. Okay, this is the bicycle. So we know the time dilate. What does it mean? If we move, time slows down compared with somebody that is not moving anymore. So if these are two friends standing still on on in in their in, in, I don't know in, in a place, in any place, anywhere, and one of the two guys says, "Okay, I will leave by," and he starts a trip on on a, on a, on a, on a on a vehicle, a car, a plane, a starship. Time for him is flowing slower than for his friend that is still standing still where he was. We're not talking about the slowed aging, as if moving helps cells to regenerate biologically. So the guy ages less. No, we're talking physically. We're talking about physical reality. The guy that is moving exists for a lesser amount of time than the guy that is not moving compared with him. Because then maybe this guy is also moving because he's on Earth. Earth is moving, so maybe this guy is moving if compared with something else that is still in, in, in the cosmos. But I'm talking about the two guys with reference to each other. So the guy that is moving, this has been physically proven. This is this is this is absolutely sure. Even satellites, GPS satellites, had to be adjusted to compensate for time dilation because they're moving, uh, how fast they're moving, and how far away from the Earth's gravitational well field they are. Otherwise, all the readings of the GPS satellites were off. But anyway, it's it's a long story. You can find it. A lot of materials online. So we all know that that when we move, time slows down if compared with somebody that is not moving like we are. The faster we move, the slower time flows for whatever is it that is moving. If we approach the speed of light, let's pretend, um, the, the difference in time, the temporal displacement becomes huge. Which means that if this guy stays here, standing still for 10 years, let's say, and this guy goes on a, on a fast starship traveling at, uh, near the speed of light, when he comes back, for this guy's 10 years past, so he counted 10 years on his clock, on his calendars, on his phone, but this guy... For this guy that was traveling that fast, maybe only one year passed, three months. There is there, there uh, this is simple math. If you Google time dilation calculator, you can play with numbers however you want. You can put the speed in terms of percentage of speed of light. You can put a time window of like 10 years still on Earth. The guy is moving at 93% speed of light. When 10 years passed here, standing still on Earth, how many years passed for the guy at 93% the speed of light? At 99, 99.9. There are plenty of calculators. It's pretty fun. So, time slows down. But, if the guy moves slowly, and every speed is slow if compared with approaching the speed of light, even at the fastest, ro fastest rocket we have, the difference is time in time is minuscule. It's like nanoseconds over over a longer period of time but this is the surprise at least was a surprise for me in this video that I'm putting in the, uh, the link in the description Brian Greeny the distance of the two guys amplifies the difference in time so what does it mean if this guy travels very fast, leaves Earth and travels very fast here, time slows down at a certain extent for him compared with us that are still here on Earth.
the guy has to approach the speed of light but to get very close to it in order to, to have a, a, a big difference in time compared with the guy that is not traveling. But if the guy travels slowly, the difference in time is, is irrelevant. If this happens very far away in space, like the alien compared with us, the difference in time gets amplified. Even if the alien simply goes for a nice ride on his bicycle at 20 kilometers per hour under the sun, maybe his blue giant sun, who knows how beautiful it is. So, what, what Brian Greene says, says is that the now, he says, let's, this is the history of the entire universe, this is the future, this is now. So let's think about time uh, like many frames, like the frames of a video of, of an old film, okay? Every instant, every second, every fraction of a second is a frame, is a slice of universe. And he shows beautiful animation in computer graphics. He shows these slices like a, a slice of universe, like a frame, like a photograph of the entire universe with the stars, the galaxies, the planet, the people running, jogging, whatever. So he says, if we consider the entire time like many slices, this one is the slice of now. This is now on Earth, 2018. See? Here things get very weird and crazy and interesting. Not all slices are straight. The slice is straight only if the two subjects, for example, the alien here, far away from Earth, billions of light years maybe. This is billions of light years far away, trillions of kilometers. And we are here. If we are both not moving, our time, theoretically, because then the galaxies are also moving. Let's pretend the alien and, and John Doe here on Earth, John Doe, is, are not moving. They are perfectly still again, comparing them with each other then their now slice is the same. So it's 2018 for us. If, so this much time passed for us from the beginning of time, the same much time passed for this alien from the beginning of time. But if the alien starts moving, or John Doe starts moving, then time dilation, this temporal discrepancy, kicks in. So, we saw one way to increase the difference in time, by increasing speed. So, if a guy here leaves John Doe and started traveling very fast, his time starts to slow. Another way is to undergo a very strong gravitational field. If the alien starts his, his nice and calm ride, relaxing ride under the sun on his bicycle, at just 20 kilometers per hour. So let's say he starts going, going there, far away from us, from John Doe on Earth. Although he is going very slowly, see what happens. This will be his time slice. Slightly oriented towards the past compared with John Doe timeline. What does it mean that after five minutes, let's say after five years that the alien traveled, more than five years passed here for John Doe? Or in other words, if John Doe stayed still from five years, let's say from 2018 to 2023 here on Earth, because the alien was moving away, for the alien, less than five years past. So the alien is always a little bit in the past. Crazy. Compared with John Doe on Earth, simply because he's moving. But as you can see, although the alien is traveling very slowly, at just 20 kilometers per hour on his bicycle, 
So his time slice, now this is too much, but a delimitation of the, of the whiteboard, his time slice is very, very slightly sloped towards the past. See, it's not straight. His now moment is slightly in the past than compared with John Doe's now. However, because the alien is incredibly far away from Earth, see, billions of light years, this is the universe, let's say, at this distance, the temporal displacement in the past gets amplified, see? Because here it's a little bit, a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more, much more. So, as long as John Doe on Earth, this is crazy. I'm concluding this parenthesis. As long as John Doe on Earth and the alien in another galaxy very far away stand exact, stand still, perfectly still, their now is the same. Now is now for us and is now for the alien. As soon as he starts moving far away from us, his now moment does not correspond with us anymore. It's as if in our present, 2018, he disappears. It's incredible. It's as if he he's synchronized, he is pushed back in the past, in time, maybe when on Earth they were building the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France, 200, 200, 300, 500, 700 years ago. I don't know, now we would need to, the proper distance, the difference in speed to, to do the exact calculation, and I don't, I don't even know the equation, but physicists can calculate it if we tell them how far the alien is, but it can be hundreds of years. So, as soon as the alien starts uh, uh, traveling on, on his bicycle, his now moment gets pushed in our past. Now, he doesn't exist. He's not on his bicycle. He is on his bicycle when maybe on Earth was in, in, in the 17th century. Can you see how crazy time is? Time's nature. So time is not a static thing everywhere in the universe, no matter what. And there are more times. Because the alien started moving, so he got kicked in the past for us, for John Doe on Earth. But maybe his cousin is still standing still on the planet, like John Doe. So his for his cousin and John Doe, the now slice of time, the now frame, is still the same. So for whatever is moving, time gets displaced. For whatever is not, time is the same. See how dynamic, how variable reality is. Now, another thing that is maybe even crazier. We saw that the distance influences the time dilation, the ta temporal difference. Also the direction he is moving. If the alien starts traveling on his bicycle and gets far away from John Doe on Earth, his time gets displaced into the past. But, on the contrary, if he starts traveling on his bicycle in this direction, pointing towards John Doe, approaching us, see what happens? There is still time dilation because he's still moving while John Doe is standing still and it's moving very far away so the temporal dilation gets amplified but in the opposite direction. So as soon as the alien turns his bicycle and starts traveling towards Don jo John Doe sorry, while our now, John Doe's now is 2018 is, is this, the aliens now gets pushed from the past of John Doe to John Doe's future. So he starts uh, operating his bicycle, he gets pushed in the future. 
if before it was existing like 300 years before John Doe it will it will start existing 300 years after John Doe when we will all be dead isn't this crazy so now that we saw this we can go back to our question when did time start now there isn't an official answer we only know that time started when it started because there there wasn't time before but there wasn't even a before we cannot even say before time as i said in the beginning of the video but now that we know this we can try to speculate something to hopefully inspire somebody to come out with a partial solution or maybe we can get a partial solution from this video so when I have to erase all these things that I added and I will redraw the bread loaf, the, the, the allegorical bread loaf that represents the the entire history of the universe, the entire space and the entire time. Okay. So origin of time. It was a bread loaf. I will make it a little shorter because I might need more room under a whiteboard. Origin of time now future so we saw that the time frames can can be variable I'm sorry but it's very difficult to translate in words concepts that they can barely grasp I like to call these so w when we reason and we wonder about these mysteries the feeling if it feels exactly like this as if uh, we're trying to to assemble a jigsaw puzzle with one little problem that the little pieces of the puzzle are made of ice and the very thin so you look at the pieces as soon as you start having a kind of a picture in your mind as soon as you try to grab the pieces to actually put them together and make a more a more organized image they melt in your hands because they were thin slices of ice and you lose that picture again this just mentally then if you have to translate in words in this process because before these pieces melt in your hands it's even worse but I will try so we saw these time loaves time slices that are variable they they their slope towards the past or the future change based on some parameters distance speed gravity so what is now for somebody can be the past for somebody else or again the same moment or even the future does this imply that the entire time past present and future already exists this is what seems to emerge in the video i mentioned before but i wouldn't totally agree with this hypothesis even though it seems it does because if right now the alien in another galaxy, or we don't need an alien, even an asteroid that is moving away from us in another galaxy, it's not now anymore. Let's say an asteroid is standing still like us, or is moving like us. We are in the same moment, in the same now, in the same present time. But another asteroid is moving and is approaching that asteroid. Now it hit it and pushed it away from us. Right now, the time of that asteroid that was located billions of light years away is in the past compared with us if another asteroid hit it and pushed it toward us 
then now it got pushed in our future. So it would seem that if right now that asteroid is in our future, the future already exists, and so the past, the past still exists. That's what it might seem, that's what also comes out from that video, but I wouldn't totally agree with it. And it's connected with the initial question, when did time start? One could say, how can you not agree with it? If, if right now an asteroid or an alien on a bicycle can be pushed in the past or in, the pu fu in our past of our future, it means that the path, both the past and the future already exist. I will explain why I wouldn't agree. Because if we reason in this way, we are not reasoning really independently by time, but we are projecting the past and the future in the present. We say the past and the future already exist now. But it's not now, it's the past and the future. So, we cannot say they exist, in my opinion, we cannot say they exist, the past, sorry, the future already exists. The past still exists. Because already or still apply to our time frame now, 2018. If the alien starts his travel, his, sorry, his trip on his bicycle and get far away from us and he gets pushed to the past, he's in the past with respect to our time. But in his time, nothing happened. He's still going on with his life, still aging at the same rate he was aging before. So this difference in time, past, future, is an, a relative effect of the motion of this, the alien, against us. Now, let's go back to the question. When did time start? So let's say it's zero. Well, actually, let's not confuse. Now we are horizontal, representing time horizontally. So when did time start? Well, time start when it started, started when it started. But what was before? There was no before, as we said, before, because before would imply time, before time, but it's, it wouldn't be before time. So there was no before. And here comes the key word, temporally. Temporally speaking, there was no before. It doesn't mean there wasn't anything. This is crazy. Because this something is timeless. This something that I will represent with another color, with green, is something that has no time. This thing that we have no idea what it is, caused time, but we cannot say caused, because we are used to conjugate verbs temporally. So if something happen, now, happens now, I am recording this video. I recorded another video last week. The timeless, weird, unknown thing that caused time caused time and then time started no it's wrong caused implies time specifically in the past so we don't even have a grammar to describe the operations done by something that is timeless so instead of using the past i would just use a general infinitive to cause because that thing 
is timeless. So I would say this timeless thing to cause time. Time, per se, by its very nature, uh, is something that passes, that flows, kind of, at least. It might be a consequence rather than an actively flowing thing, but let's say we are used to describe it in, in these terms. So, a certain amount of time passed, and that's it. A certain amount of time passed. To simplify the things, let's say that the universe only had a hundred years. Only time existed only for a hundred years. Let's pretend. So, let's make these, these things simpler. A hundred years. Which means that the universe existed for a hundred years. It started a hundred years ago. Time existed for a hundred years. And there was no before. So when from our point of view it was a hundred years ago. Another keywords. Keyword, sorry timelessly, which means not before or after, timelessly, this thing that we have no idea how it works, what it is, to cause, do not to say caused, time. Now, let's try to put ourselves in the let's call it frame of reference of this thing that I will represent with a question mark because it's a mystery we cannot understand it but let's try to put ourselves in its shoes logically this point of view this is the key of why I do not literally agree with the hypothesis of that video that past, present and future all exist right now. So, the loaf of the entire history of the universe, which we represented in this sim extremely simplified way, looks like a kind of a wave, We have simplified it on a two-dimensional board, but we can only reason in a global way, like considering it all, all the universe in all its time, we can only do this from the frame of reference, from the timeless frame of reference of this thing. So if we look at the universe from here, that's when we can say that past, present and future exist, but not from any point in here. Because in here we are somewhere in time, so we are trapped. Whether we are in, in the 2018 or in the 1018 or somewhere in the future, we are trapped in time. So, if we look at this thing from the inside, and even inside is metaphorical, because the same thing that I just said to time, it also applies to space. There is no space outside of space. The topic was touched, was barely covered in the previous video, the first video of this channel. But anyway... So even inside is, is inappropriate, but we don't have a vocabulary to talk about things that have no time or no space. So, if we are trapped inside, the present is a present, the past is the past, it's not the present. If we look at the, if we look at the, at the, at the universe, if we look at the universe from this point of view, then 
this is a timeless point of view. What does it mean, timeless point of view? It means that past, present, and future do not already exist because already would push them again somewhere in time in this case in our current present moment so we can say that past present and future timelessly exist it's a completely different and timeless point of view So even the drawing in the form of the bread loaf is not appropriate. Because why? Because it's impossible to draw it otherwise. Because whatever drawing we do on a bidimensional board in a three-dimensional software, whatever we do, we are doing it now. So as you can see, this is frozen in the present moment. So the moment we, we draw past or future on this board, we're not really drawing the past or the future because it's still now. This is just a, an analogy, a metaphor. So we are projecting, we are pushing past and future in the present so we are talking about the present time we are not really talking about the past and we are not really talking about the future if we represent them in this way and we say the future already exists the past still exists the moment we use these temporal adverbs like already or still we are we are grab dragging future and time in the present so we are not really talking about past and future we are deluding ourselves but we are still talking about the present in order for us to really talk about the present the past and the future about the end the whole thing we need to observe it timelessly or atemporally which means that we would need a timeless sorry a timeless whiteboard and draw them in a timeless fashion which is impossible so again our mind will keep trying to say wait a second but if the alien on his bicycle that now is standing still like us so right now he exists in this very moment that we are watching this video right now far away in a distant galaxy billions of light years away if when I will do this he will start his trip on his bicycle approaching us coming toward us traveling toward us his time will not be in our time anymore but he will be pushed in the future so let's pretend the alien is still standing still at the same speed as us on his planet so we are living in the same now moment us and the alien but in, in a few seconds he will start his trip toward us on his bicycle he's still living our same time He's still living our same time. He's going to start his trip now. He's gone. He's not. He's, 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 he's traveling. He's not in this moment anymore. He's in the future for us now on his bicycle. Does it mean that the future, his future, already exists? No. It seems, but it's not. It doesn't. If we say that his future already exists, we are grabbing his future 
stealing it and dragging it here, tracking it here in the past. But we cannot do that. It's a delusion. Our hands will slip. We cannot grab it. If we if we could, the moment even if we could, let's pretend the moment we did that, it would cease to be future because we just dragged it into the present. We said the future already, that it already exists. So it's not future anymore, it's present. See, we cannot consider, I think I can conclude in this way, verbally. If we want to consider a chunk of time locally, okay, we have a vocabulary. But we cannot consider time in its totality, in its entirety, the history of the universe, the history of time, from any point of view inside of it. The only way, if we want to talk and speculate about it and consider time in its totality, in its entirety, we must do it from this point of view, from a timeless reference frame. Does this have any consequences? Yes, it does. I, I would like to make another hypothesis, which might sound even more crazy than this. I will redraw the law of the history of the universe. Have you ever heard about the light cone? I will explain it very quickly because again I don't want to go off topic but I'm not sure that everybody that we watch this video knows what a light cone is. Right, let's open a quick parenthesis. Time, space. Zero, beginning of time. Well, let, let, let's forget about the beginning. Now we're talking about any possible random moment in the history of the universe and of time. So there was time. So time, space. So let's do it in this way. It's more accurate. Let's put it in the center. Time, space. Let's pretend we are here now. Okay, let's let's say that a uh, here a uh, hundred years ago we're we're not a hundred years old. Uh, ten years ago we were here. It was the two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine, two thousand and ten, two thousand and eleven, two thousand and twelve, two thousand and thirteen, two thousand fourteen. I ran out of space, so I will jump all the way to now, two thousand eighteen. This is 2018. So let's say that we had this old car, a very old car, all rusted, and it didn't work. We needed to restore it. So this old car was parked in a garage near here, and it wasn't moving. So this old car, all rusted and damaged, was See how, how good I can draw. It's almost disgusting, sorry. It was standing still in 2008 and it didn't move anywhere in space. It was still in the garage. So it only moved, metaphorically speaking, in time. 2008, 2009, 2010. So as you can see, it didn't do any movement, spatially speaking, only temporally. 2014, then maybe in 2012 somebody started working on it to fix it. 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016. Finally, in 2018, the car is fully restored, brand new, ready to be driven, ready to go. Right now, let's pretend we just finished fixing this car. It's beautiful, an old model, fully restored. 
and in perfect working condition. Let's turn on the engine. We turned it on. Let's go for a trip. So, right now, besides keep moving in time, because time is passing for us, we will get hopefully to 2019, 2020, etc. We are also starting to move in space a little bit. Like this. So if these are years, one year, two years, three years, let's make the kilometers. One kilometers, two kilometers, three kilometers, four kilometers. Now these were years. For simplicity, let's switch to hours rather than years, otherwise it would be a mess. Hours. One hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, and so on. We turn on the car. And let's say that, uh, well, actually, let's keep it like years, otherwise the car would be almost like a starship. In one year, we covered one, actually in one day. OK, that's acceptable. In one day, these are days, sorry, days. In one day, we covered one kilometer. Oh, sorry, it's more than one day. One one kilometer. Okay? The scale is wrong anyway, but... Oh, yes. Let's do this. In four days, we covered one kilometer, okay? Or, again, sorry, because I, I'm, I'm creating the, the, the content right now. So let's say that these are hours and these are kilometers. Kilometers and hours. In one hour, we covered four kilometers. It means that we were traveling at four kilometers per hour. If we were traveling at two kilometers per hour, we would have been faster. Which means that in four hours, instead of, instead of four kilometers, Sorry, instead of one kilometer, we would have covered two kilometers. Kilometers. If we were traveling in our car at three kilometers uh, every four hours, sorry, it would mean that in four hours we would have covered three kilometers. Four kilometers every four hours, even faster. In four hours, we've covered four kilometers. So see, the faster we go, the more sloped this line is. Now, let's explain the light cone. We cannot go back in, pa in the past, we cannot travel back in time, we can only travel, in, uh, we can only move ahead in, in, towards the future, but we can move in any direction we want in space. So if we move in space on this side very slowly, we will do like this. In one year we were here, in, after two years we will be here, in, after three years we will be here, after four years we will be here. If we moved in the other way, let's say west instead of east, in one year we would have been here, in two years here, in three years here, in four years here. See, we moved in space and in time. Let's pretend we're moving much faster. In four years, we get here instead of here. So we cover this distance in this time instead of this distance. See, we are faster. Or we could have gone here. See, this looks like a cone. This is a cone. What's the maximum speed possible in reality, in physics? The speed of light. Which means that the highest speed, and it's theoretical because actually we cannot push any matter at the speed of light, not even tiny particles. The particles can be pushed at almost the speed of light, but not at the speed of light. Mass 
cannot be pushed at the speed of light. It's a long story. It would die. It would dilate. Would it would make a mess. But theoretically, the highest speed possible in the universe, because we can communicate using light pulses. The let, let's talk about light. The fastest speed possible is the speed of light. Now, let's change this scale, and then I will go back to that last crazy hypothesis, and the video will be finished. Because I just want to explain what is a light cone. Uh, uh, let's change the scale of kilometers and years or hours, and let's make it that we know that light can tr uh, travels in the vacuum of, at almost 300,000 uh, kilometers per second. So let's make these as 300,000 kilometers, which means these are 600,000, these are 900,000 kilometers, and these are 1,200,000 km kilometers per second. Eh, sorry, kilometers, and that's it. And these are seconds, one, two, three, and four seconds. Okay? So light can go at 300,000 kilometers per second, which means that in one second, light got here at 300, it covered 300,000 kilometers. In two seconds, light covered 600,000 kilometers. So, two seconds, 300,000 kilometers. In three seconds, 900,000 kilometers. And in four seconds, 1,200,000 kilometers. So, in the time of four seconds, light got here, 1,200,000 kilometers. So, if we pointed the, the light torch, whatever, in the other direction, the light would have gone here. Instead of going west, let's, let's pretend this is west and this is east. So, in this case, light went west. 1,200,000 kilometers in four seconds. Here, light, so 300,000, 600,000, 900,000, 1,200,000. 1, light, in four seconds, covered 1,200,000 kilometers. Now, this could have been done in every direction, because this is a simplification, because we need to draw time, so we are still in one dimension to space. But basically, this is a cone. This is called light cone. And this is very important for that hypothesis, the last hypothesis I want to propose in the video about the nature of time. This is a light cone. It could have gone in this direction, let's say, uh, if that's east, north or in behind, in the other direction, let's say south, whatever. What does it mean? It means that this is whatever is outside of the light cone is off limits. I will draw it in red. Why? A simple reason. Because to get here in the red area you need to travel faster than light. So you would need for example to cover 600,000 km kilometers not in two seconds like like as a light does, but in one second, which means this. See, it's the slope is is it, it's beyond the, pre, the the light cone. So it's not possible to get here in this time. We need to go beyond the speed of light. So anything. In the universe, the alien on a bicycle, John Doe here on Earth, us, light, whatever, a galaxy star. Well, then there's, there, there's a proper context. But anything in any point of space-time, in any point of the universe, can only 
influence in some way, physically or with light, with electromagnetic waves, with radiations, where in, in case of light and radiation is the faster way to influence, anything can only influence the rest of the universe within the light cone, which I will draw. Well, no, green, we use green for the crazy thing. Yellow, like light, kind of, like visible light from, from the sun. Nothing can influence anything beyond the light cone, which means that this red area is as if it doesn't even exist. So for us, where is the red area right now? I can turn on a, a light torch, point it in the space, and that's the most I can influence. It means that from the moment that we do this, the fastest I can influence the rest of the universe, for example, by pointing a laser, is 300,000 kilometers away from me, because that's the speed of light. From the moment that we do this, count one second, in that one second, I could only have influenced reality up to 300,000 kilometers away from me. Okay, so one second, I pointed the laser. In this one second, I was only able to influence 300,000 kilometers of reality around me. This is the radius, 300,000 kilometers in any direction. And this is time, which in one second, which creates the cone metaphorically, like in a, in, in a graphic alleg 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 allegory. Sorry, my English. So, What's beyond the light cone? And let's go to, again, when did time start? It's kind of connected. Let's try, let's see. It's the case to redraw the bread loaf representing the whole history of the universe. Here things get very interesting. Beginning of time, time zero, Big Bang, or whatever it is, if it wasn't Big Bang. Universe expansion, entire universe, our whale, the, the bread loaf, whatever. So, sorry. Okay, it is very ugly. Okay. Let's put a light cone here. Let's say that, so, as we, as we saw, this is time, beginning of time. This is now, for us, 2018. Okay? This is that crazy, mysterious, timeless thing that to cause, I'm not saying caused, to cause time. We, so this is our relative now time, 2018. Let's say Earth is here. In this point of the, uh, of the universe, in this point of time, right here. Past, we cannot go anymore. Future. We are projected towards the future. We are moving in the future temporarily. This is our light cone, let's say. Which means that in this amount of time, light could only get this far. From our plane, this is our plane, light could only travel this much. In this time, sorry, in this time, light could only travel this much in this time light could only travel this much so this is our light cone and this is everything else in the universe that is beyond our light cone now we saw that we saw that 
we divided metaphorically again because this representation is not correct. We would need to look at the universe atemporally, timelessly, from this point of view, to really represent it in its entirety, as I said, but we, we have to, to make it, to let it suffice. That's all we've got. So we saw that if we divide time in many slices of many instants, pictures of time, one second after the Big Bang, two seconds, three seconds, or one trillionth of a second, two trillionth of a second, or one millennia, two millennia, one millennium, two millennia, three millennia, 2018, whatever. These are the time slices, okay, of the universe. Now, we we saw that if here we are now, 2018, there's John Doe on Earth, and here, far away, there's an alien. As soon as he starts moving, if he, if he moves away from John, he gets projected in John's past. If he approaches John, he gets projected into John's future. So these are the slices, okay? The time, the slope time slices. Light cone. What's beyond the light cone? As we said, to go beyond the light cone, and here's the key, to go beyond the light cone, we would have to travel faster than light. Let's forget for a second that it's impossible. It's just a thought experiment. But what happens if we do that mathematically? Math can handle these things, kind of. But if technology cannot. So, we know that the faster we travel, the slower time passes compared with whatever was not traveling, what is still not traveling, uh, compared with us. So the more I approach the speed of light in my, in my trip, in my the traveling in this, let's say, starship or whatever, the slower time flows compared with John that is still sitting still on his couch on Earth. John is a kind of a sedentary guy, he never moves. He just moves in time, not in space, which means it's not good for his belly. To to have a to be healthy, we need to move in space too, not only in time. But anyway, so so John is standing still on his couch, fattening. Somebody has the alien house, whoever starts to travel in space with a starship. The more accelerates, the more time slows, slows, slows compared to John's time. What if that starship could reach, because that's what happened to the actual light photons. Let's say the starship, let's be optimistic. The starship reaches, hits the speed of light. What happens to time? We know mathematically that time literally stops. So. This is very important. If, let's say Bob, make it simple. If Bob, traveling away from John, was being projected in the past, in John's past, his time was slowing down. The faster Bob goes, the more time slows down. So let's say like this. It goes back and back. At the speed of light, time stopped. So, how would we represent this slope? Horizontal. So, see, Bob is not in the past anymore, like a thousand years, two thousand years, three thousand years, three million years, three billion years in the past of John. 
as soon as we Bob gets to the speed of light, I don't know if exactly when he gets it or exactly when it passes the speed of light. Tom, it points to the origin of time. Bob, it's as if he never existed for John. Bob is in the origin of time. In what's called the initial singularity, it seems to me, if not at the speed of light, beyond the speed of light, it doesn't matter how faster than light. But, as we saw in the beginning of the video, distance amplifies. So Bob doesn't need to travel that fast to be greatly temporally displaced against John. He can go on his bicycle as long as he's very far away. Which means there is also a distance beyond which at the minimum temporal displacement of Bob compared with John, boom, Bob is already projected there at the original singularity. What happens in the future? If Bob travels towards John, where does, it, where does he go? We saw that the direction of the temporal displacement was inverted from the past to the future. And the faster Bob was traveling, this is John's time, 2018, this is Bob's time. The faster Bob is traveling against uh, towards John, the, the farther in the future Bob is pushed, if compared with John's time. But what if Bob reaches the speed or reaches of or passes the speed of light toward John? The slope or just passes the speed of light? Boom. Where is it? The future will never stop. Time will time will never stop. So where did it go? This is very important. Because we know time as a beginning, but it will never end. So where, temporally speaking, I, would sh I should ask, when did it go? Away from John, faster, towards the beginning of time. Towards John, faster, where? The end of time, so time will finish, will end someday. But there's even something deeper. Again, also, if it goes towards John, it doesn't have to go that fast, but if it starts from a very far away galaxy and goes towards John, boom! If it was far away enough, the slope would be like this. I'm, I'm, I'm not a physicist, but for sure there is a map to describe this. Now, let's go back to the light cone. It's, it's difficult for me to... I mean, I have the concept, but it's, I, I'm trying to translate it in words, so I'm sorry if the video is, is long-winded. I already erased what, another version, was even longer. But anyway... The light cone. What does it mean? To break through the light cone, we would need to travel faster than light. As I just said, the faster we travel, the slower the time. We get to the speed of light, time stops. Theoretically, as a scientist from NASA said, I can tell you the name, because I saved it, theoretically, if, so, the closer we approach to the, if the closer we approach to the speed of light, the slower the time. If we reach the speed of light, time stops. Theoretically, if we pass the speed of time, uh, of light, sorry, we would travel back in past. So, no, I, I can find it. I saved it somewhere, but I don't want to make the video even longer. Maybe if I find it, I will, I will put it in the description of the video. Maybe it's here, time dilation. Okay, curvature of space time, space time, time dilation. Mm 
No, I can find it. I, I will try to put it in the description. Anyway, in theory, time can we can go, we could go back in time, but back when the numbers of math, if I'm not wrong, show a, 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 like like when there is an an, an an infinite curvature of space time in, in a singularity of a black hole. So there isn't midway back in time one year, two years, or a thousand years goes back to the initial singularity because if we go beyond stopping time or even if we stop time at the speed of light I mean we go beyond these calculations so I don't know how to say it but it's it's not measurable anymore like we break through time we go timeless that weird thing that i draw as a green blob here because how could we draw a tem timeless thing causing time so what about the light cone i was saying it's it's difficult and i had the concept but again to, to, to connect the, the, the concepts, it's very hard. To leave the light cone, we have to go faster than light. But if we go faster than light, we are projected in the past to the origin of time. What does this mean? I think I found a way to ex express this verbally. That for the very fact that whatever is beyond our light cone cannot be reached if not going beyond sp the speed of light, we saw that time and space are not static and absolute in the universe, in reality, but they are also relative. Relative to what? Relative to each other, when things move relatively to each other, for example. So, uh, for the very fact that the alien was residing very far away from John here on Earth, a little movement with his bicycle projected him a, a lot, hundreds of years in the past or in the future of John. So, if we want to reach, to see, to touch something that is beyond our light cone, we need to travel faster than light. What does it mean? That's a crazy hypothesis. Maybe it means that whatever is right now beyond our light cone right now beyond your light cone of you of your little frame of reference that you're watching this little video whatever is beyond that light cone right now in your now moment is here it's in the initial singularity it maybe doesn't even exist temporally speaking but the weird thing, why? Because it's beyond the light cone. To reach it, I would have to, to travel faster than light. So, not absolutely, but relatively to me, relatively to you, to your moment, your frame of reference, your temporal frame of reference and spatial, your space, your little chunk of space and time, relatively to you, that thing, planet, alien, galaxy, whatever, that would be beyond your light cone. It's, it, it doesn't even exist because it's beyond the light cone. It's beyond the light speed. It might be kind of stored in that green blob that I represented with the green, green blob. Timeless and spaceless thing that causes time and space relatively to you 
But then it's weird because at the same time of your time, there was another guy in another continent on Earth, which was a little farther away from you in a certain direction. So his light cone was a little move. So let's say that if you are here and this is your light cone, okay, this is time, this is space, time, space, you are here, this is your light cone, this is your reality, your universe, okay? So, whatever is here, for you, relatively to you, doesn't even exist. It might be in the initial singularity. Not yet in the initial singularity, but timelessly. In the, yet doesn't, 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 it doesn't make sense. It's a t temporal adverb. So, relatively to you, this thing is outside of the light cone. But in this very moment of time, but it wasn't only you. There was also another guy, maybe here, in another continent. So, a little here. For this other guy, the light cone was this. So, see, this point of the universe is real. is 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 current for for the other guy that is moved from you but at the same time for you this thing was here in the original singularity so how does how does how is it possible it is because if we consider the entire universe space and time in its entirety like the famous bread loaf but in a proper way, in the only way that can be appropriate to consider the entirety of space and time, which is a spaceless and timeless way, it's timeless point of reference that green blob, famous green blob I put there. Then all these dynamics come and go because that thing in time produces all and coordinates all these effects and who knows what's the nature of the connection of the the underlying structure connection interaction between the timeless thing and time itself that spaceless thing and space itself and space time so from the from a timeless point of view There's always a big bang going on, if we want to call it big bang. I don't know how to say it. I have this concept. I don't know how to express it. From a timeless point of view, this thing of the universe happening, it's always going on. Timelessly. There is no difference. From a timeless point of view, there is no difference between this point, this point, these light cones and stuff. This makes me propend, uh, makes me consider the hypothesis of the simulated universe. It's like a simulated video game in which the, the little universe you can explore in your starship gets built when you get in a certain point. But when you're far away enough, it, 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 it's nothing. It's just some code in the, in, the, in the computer. It's potentially a, a region of the universe. It's potential, but it's not real. So it seems to me that the entirety of the space and time is like potentially uh, observed, contained, whatever, metaphorically contained in the timeless blob thing that I made like a green blob. But then when it comes to our reality the, that we would call at this point simulated reality, it gets simulated, it gets produced whenever it, it's needed. And I'm still having difficulties to fully uh, phrase, to fully translate in words these concepts. What about here? We saw that the slope went in the opposite direction. What about the end of time here? 
but it's the same thing it's the same thing time grows in time but from beyond the universe speaking of which beyond the universe the name of this channel beyond time from a timeless point of view you think there's really difference between past and future there is no past present and future that's why it's different it's a different hypothesis because in the hypothesis of the bread loaf past was still somewhere so still we are dragging past in the present future is already already present we are taking the future stealing it and bringing it into the, the present it's not it's not present it's not past it's not future it's timeless the cause of the universe must be timeless it's a long story we I, I will have to to make a lot of videos to to motivate that conclusion but basically beyond time when you break the the speed of light so until you are before the limit of the speed of light the slope changed as we saw if the alien travels away from John his time gets in the past of John's time if the alien travels towards John his time gets in the future of John time but when the slope is zeroed at the speed of light or at extreme distances for any speed or just up breaking the speed of light the slope is zero so this and these are actually bent but the bending is just a metaphor it's not appropriate it's impossible to draw in a two-dimensional or three-dimensional or four-dimensional canvas whatever this because it, me, I have to add metaphorically bends imagine we take this universal wolf out of this whiteboard and connect these two points so basically there is I don't know I don't know how to better express this concept I would have to talk much more but I ran out of words I'm sorry <laughs> anyway I hope this is inspiring you please allow me to to take a quick look to my notes that I talked before okay just in case we come because there was there, there are other concepts I would like to add to the video but I'm not finding words to add them maybe because it's just all fantasy but I don't care as long as I can stimulate other people and ignite a constructive a creative chain reaction and when these stimuli when these inspirations hit somebody that is uh, in educated enough and smart enough to crunch them and correct them maybe they will work like the famous apple on on uh, Newton's head I hope I'm at least throwing apples uh, around in the world. Yeah, the simulated universe I already mentioned. The bending, yes. Okay, so I might add something. What's the universe? What's space time? What is reality? As we saw from Brian Greene's video, the universe is not only the sum of its part, the container, whatever it is, space-time, the sum of the things that it contains. The universe is also a dynamic. The universe consists in its parts, in its content, but also in the dynamic interactions and relative statuses I want to write this down relative statuses of everything that it contains 
related to each other. The I will repeat it. The universe consists not only in space-time and in all the things that it contains and in all its, let's say, gravitational regions, gravitational wells, galaxies caused by galaxies, by stars, by anything, by even an atom. So the universe does not only, sorry, consists in whatever it contains, in its parts, in space and time, in energy and matter, but also in the interaction, reciprocal interactions, interactions, and in the relative statuses, spatial and temporal situations, statuses, of all the things that it contains against versus relative to all the other things. See how complex, how crazy it is. And even the tiniest interaction of an ad the tiniest relation of an atom, position, motion, whatever, of an atom relative to another atom that is located away three billions of light years, even that re reciprocal relationship changes the very configuration of space and time relative to the two atoms. And we have countless atoms in the universe. Can you imagine what a mess? Anyway, that's it. So that's it for now. I hope we covered something of the nature of time and its craziness. So let's try to summarize all these an hour and 40 minutes, sorry, in a sentence and a hypothesis of when did time start? Uh, specifying that the use of the word when is not appropriate because we are talking about the beginning of time so there was no time, there is no before I would say kind of when did time start? Timelessly a timeless thing to cause I will use the infinitive because there is no time to conjugated to cause time timelessly so in no time never temporally speaking but timelessly speaking there might be a lot going on and well going on is not even a problem but so when did time start temporally speaking never because time makes sense only in time. Absolutely speaking, timelessly. But because we care of the question from our point of view, because we are temporal beings, so when we ask this question we care about time, we care about the temporal order of the events, I would say that the most appropriate hypothetical answer to when did time start is never. Because temporally speaking, Time never started because time started atemporally, timelessly. So there is no time, there is no big before. So nothing. There, time only makes sense in time. That's it. Maybe I didn't even answer hypothetically, but I don't know how to phrase, how to represent the concept in words in a better way than this. I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry if it's a little disorganized, but these concepts are like shooting stars. Just ping ping for an instant and then they disappear. You try to grab them to assemble the jigsaw puzzle, but the pieces of the puzzle, as I said, are made of thin slices of ice. So as soon as you grab them, they melt and you lose them. So it's not easy. But I, I'm, I'm writing a book. I mean, I'm, with, with the book, it's not like real time talking. You can sit down, you can correct, you can fine tune it, you can imp find better words, better descriptions. 
So um, hopefully I will finish it in a decent amount of time. And, and then it will be very well organized, much at least much more than the videos. But I hope you enjoyed the videos and feel free to comment. Uh, remember, I will put in the description of the video the, the address of my web page. In my web page, you can find the three banners, the three YouTube banners of my three YouTube channels. Uh, one of which is this, which is called Beyond the Universe. Thank you so much for your great patience. All the best and enjoy these mysteries.